Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at a small little card game called Bandito. The idea of this cooperative game is that Bandito here has escaped his cell by tunneling out of it, and it's your job to be searching his tunnels and blocking them off before he can escape. Now all the cards in the 70 card deck have tunnels, branching tunnels, or block tunnels, and you're going to be playing a card in your turn and redrawing back up to three. There's really not much else to this game, so will this game be something you want to hunt down and capture, or is this one best left just to get away? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back for my final thoughts on Bandito. This is Bandito set up for three players. Each player is dealt three cards, and the startup card is placed in the middle of the table, either the easy side or the hard side up. Now the goal of the game is to, before the deck runs out, seal off all the possible exits so that Bandito cannot escape. Each card will either have a series of connections making the tunnel longer or branch, or it will have a flashlight, which will terminate the tunnel, making it so the Bandito cannot escape at that exit. On a player's turn, they will play one card so that it connects to a previously played card. You cannot overlap, and all exits on one card must match the entrances on the new card. That means there can never be any paths on one card that are blocked by another card. At the end of your turn, you'll draw back up to three cards. If, at the start of your turn, you cannot play any of the cards from your hand, you discard them to the bottom of the deck and draw three more cards. The game ends when either the deck runs out or all the exits are terminated with a flashlight. So let's fast forward to see the possible outcome of this game. And that's how the game is played. Let's get back to the table to see what I thought about Bandito. So on to theme components. The theme of this game is, well, I'm not sure it makes much sense. Am I digging the tunnels or am I finding the tunnels? I understand the blocking the tunnels. I'm just not sure about making them. But you know what, for such a small game, I'm not too worried about the theme. The components are pretty minimal. The start card is a nice uh, cardboard card. It's got a hard side and an easy side, and the really only difference is the hard side has one more exit on it. The cards themselves are fine. They've held up well to repeated plays. The art on them is pretty minimalistic, but it's very functional. The rulebook is extremely short, but it gives you everything you need to know to play in like two pages. So on to the gameplay. And I'm not really sure this is a game. It feels more like a solitary activity, which is not bad. I've played this multiplayer, and although it is cooperative, it really doesn't feel like I need the other players around the table. We're all making the same decision. You have three cards in your hand, and as a cooperative group, you kind of make the decision on which card is the best one to play. So yes, it does function as a co-op game. I actually much prefer this as a solo activity. Now, But I could see the benefit of this for the family with like small kids, that you can all kind of help each other to, to, to do that. But when I first got this game, I thought I wasn't going to enjoy such a simple game. But I kept coming back to it for a way to pass 10 minutes enjoyably. Am I going to keep this one? No, I'm not going to keep this one. But I think if you enjoy thing, uh, playing things like Solitaire or Pyramids or Tripeaks, you might enjoy this one for a while. There is a reason why this has had multiple reprints of this game. So would I recommend this game? No, I'm not going to say you need to go out and buy this. Yes, I had some enjoyment out of it. It's quick, it's simple to play, and it was fun to watch the tunnels branch out as you try and block them off. And I did enjoy playing this one solo, but ultimately it's a one-trick pony game that really lacks anything that will make you want to come back to the game in six months' time. This is not a bad game, but it just has a very limited replayability. So I think overall I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. It's a fun activity that will perfectly fill 10 to 15 minutes once in a while, but not one that I feel has lasting appeal. So, however, there is a particular reason why this has had three reprints of this game, and there's now a sequel to it. But that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.